Alright, let's talk about the raw situation of the brand new A7R Mark III. Yes, I got mine today. Okay, first of all, Lightroom doesn't work as you can see. Um, no previews. If you hit import, uh, you get like, no, th those photos can't be imported. So there's no update yet and it might take a bit before Camera Raw is updated. All right, so this doesn't work. Goodbye, Lightroom. Um, Sony announced or has published a own software, so to speak, a software package of remote edit and view. The editor is not really an editor, it's more like an raw optimizer and it's quite slow. Um, the viewer is all right, but also not the fastest, as you can see. Even though I have quite a bit of uh, stuff running in the background, it's uh, you can't really select uh, stuff quickly. So I'm not too happy about this software. And um, yeah, you can use it though, because it's free. Um, the options you have is export, you can export JPEGs, all right, uh, TIFFs, which is okay, but might not be the best solution, but might be the only solution for now. And you actually can re-export RAWs, Sony RAWs, but then again, those are the same RAW files you get from the A7R Mark III in the first place, so it doesn't help here. This is a good free solution to get TIFFs out of uh, Sony RAWs. Next up, Lumina 2018, and surprisingly, it actually does open up Sony A7R 3 <laughs> files. Um, so this is nice and a surprise, but then again, you don't have a browser yet and you can't see the shots in Finder. So you need a different software to see what photos you want to open and um, which not. So this isn't a real workable solution. And there's also the issue with the raw developing tool. The processing doesn't work good in terms of high dynamic range stuff and highlight recovery. You can watch my video with the test of this with the A7R 2 um, I will test this with the A7R 3 as soon as I have a good <laughs> highlight recovery photo. Um, but yeah, yeah, not quite sure. So. Um, it works, but uh, not really. Next up is ACDC uh, Photo Studio. Not many know uh, about this software and it doesn't see RAWs from the new Sony anyway. So this is also not a solution. Then we have one photo RAW, which is all right. Um, you can see all the photos. Some say it's not fully implemented yet. I did not see any real restrictions yet. So yeah, but it's basically the same. You only can um, like quick export or export uh, like Photoshop files, TIFFs, PNG for <laughs> what reason ever. Um, uh, why is there PNG? Anyways. Yeah, so TIFF might be an option. I mean, you can send to Adobe Lightroom Classic CC directly, but um, yeah, that is also just a PSD Photoshop file export, which is okay, but could be a file management issue in the end. But it works nice. It actually opens up Lightroom. Uh, send with Send Original. Let's see what uh, happens with Edit Original. I didn't do that. And yeah, <laughs> it doesn't really work that way. So let's see. I sent to Lightroom. Yeah, and then um, it actually generates a Photoshop file, I think. Yes, there we go. PSD. Opens this up here. Nothing happens. Import. Import file. And there you have uh, one smart preview has. And then you can work with that. Auto, as you can see, the, you lose all the raw informations anyways with this. So 
this isn't a good a good solution don't think so anyways <laughs> and um, what happens when you close this yeah it doesn't bring it back to um, photo raw though so yeah I'm not quite sure about that and then there comes uh, capture one which might be the best solution but the most expensive so to speak but then again if you are a sony user nah, anyways um so you have to make a new session for example that's what i like actually so going here making a session we call that first sony a7r3 sesh <laughs> no template yet capture selects whatever something is trying to connect <laughs> get signals in my headphones <laughs> All right, so um, this is now the session. Import images. All right, let's import those. All right. Yep, this works. Okay, let's do a new A7R3 export. So let's see what I could do a PNG open with nothing. Yeah, doing it in the image folder custom name. All right, so now I could export all those files. Now this uh, takes all those photos. All right, so now that it has everything exported, I'm going back into Lightroom. Yep, here we go. Add to collection. Yes, we will import and let's see what I get. Uh, so now, whew, what's going on here? This isn't good. <laughs> so something is going on here. I'm not quite sure what. Embedded? No, this is this is really strange. Yeah, something is going on here. Daylight. So something. Something is not right. So <laughs> I think the tint tool oof hmm yeah so uh, this is not a good solution as you can see did I something in the output nothing really right so File, adjustment, ignore crop, no output shaping, metadata. Whew. Yeah, this doesn't work too good. Something, why is... <laughs> this is a uh, interesting look. Maybe we have to go playing on white, right? <laughs> so, yeah, even that looks odd. <laughs> All right, so um, as you can see, this is tricky. You have to go the TIFF way or use um, Capture One or Run Raw Photo. Huh. All right. Um, yeah, let's look into this. What's going on with the green, greenish tint thingy? Maybe something in the settings is wrong, but I don't see what. I could use PNG. <laughs> let's see what the TIFF. Uncompressed, please. Yes. Uh, else had we. Adobe RGB. There you go. 
So, and also the uh, thing about the drive space or file size, the raw file from the Sony is 18.7 megabytes. Let's go for the 85 in the Alpo folder. 85 as TNG is um, 35. Wow, that's quite big. And the TIFF might be even bigger. It's like 30, 43. Wow. So um, this is also, yeah, this is also something to consider. Yeah, so let's see what the TIFF does. Let's see if we have that green tint as well. Uh, it doesn't look right. This is... This is odd. Something is going on with the color management, but then the auto kind of looks... I can get it to look right in um, in the TIFF version. But then again, I don't have any raw data there, so... Yeah, anyways, this is going too long uh, as well already. Uh, so for now, I'd say... Yeah, I'm not quite sure though. I'm not quite sure. I mean, Capture One is a nice uh, option, um, but for me, with my look, how I work, I need like radial filters and stuff like that. Doesn't work in Capture One. Also, the masking, not a fan in Capture One. So I might stick with one raw photo for now, even though I only have the test version, so to speak. So I only can use it like two weeks or something, right? Maybe until then the um, raw update for Lightroom is there. Because I tried to switch to Capture One, but the tools that are really essential for my look and how I generate my final images are not there. Yeah, so um, this is the situation. Maybe I should uh, shoot JPEG. <laughs> that might be a good idea. Anyways, um, thanks guys for watching. Um, I'm I'm coming back to this situation. I will, yeah, I'm s one photo raw. I will try one photo raw for a bit, and let's see how that works in my workflow. Because it seems to have the right tools. Like radial filter are actually even better. I think. <sighs> difficult situation. Now that I have a nice new camera, I can't work with the photos. I mean, I can, but anyways, thanks for watching, guys. If you have any suggestion or question, let me know in the comments. Hit the like button, subscribe, or what you guys do on fa uh, Facebook, <laughs> on YouTube, Instagram, or whatever. Peace out. Oh, and also, I have the new uh, gear section below, so you can see all the photo equipment, video equipment, and my post-production equipment and stuff like that, if you want. Check it out. <laughs>